Hello folks, and welcome to another edition of the Archery Shack Shop Talk Podcast. This is number 32. Two. I'm Jeremy. I'm TJ. We're back again, closing in on a year of podcasts. I'm going to adjust this and it might bump around a little bit. That wasn't bad. And it's crazy. We've been doing these almost a year. It won't be long. I mean, this is crazy. <clears throat> Thank you all for listening. I yep. can't believe people listen to us but <laughs> we get a lot of feedback about what to talk about and keep them going so we will um we are in some wild times right now we'll talk about that later hopefully everybody's feeling well um, before we get too far down the road though and start our questions and stuff we got our product of the week and it is the trophy ridge hitman stabilizers we started carrying them about two years ago um so the long story short is they're very affordable and they come with a lot of hardware. They come with quick disconnects in the package. They also come with colored bands so you can actually change the color of the stabilizer. Yep. And like here in the shop, <clears throat> we've got six and eight inch models and we've got some packages that come with the back bars and all the back bar mounts and all that. So like for the price, it's hard to beat. I'm going to yeah. put, put a link down in the description as I've been doing here lately. If you need one, check them out we'd appreciate it it, uh if you buy one it helps the channel out so we can buy fancy stuff uh like microphones and stuff but anyway uh the hitman stabilizers we put them on bows and you know it's a carbon bar it's got a little rubber doohickey on the end of it like most of them do now and uh it does have some weights that come with it too yeah i can't remember how many ounces is on there it's got some weights to play with I just think the big thing is you can change the color of it, the way it comes. You got a yellow, blue, orange, red, purple, and green, flow green. And uh, you got the weights and the quick disconnect. You know, usually yeah. a quick disconnect by itself is like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. And this whole package is like 50 to 60 bucks mm-hmm. for the most part. So, I mean, it's, it's a good good deal. I thought we'd talk about them. I've been. I had it on my bear bow I hunted with last year. I think you did too. I did. I ran I was, a set. I was real happy with them. I was too. So, check them out. Check out the link. And we'll. Is there? Are we still recording? You see the red light? I see the red light. All right. I'm just checking. I'm just checking. <laughs> I didn't see it from over here. We've had the camera stop before, and we've talked for 20 minutes, and then been like, "Ooh, we just missed it all." Yeah. But anyway, that's our product of the week. Check out our link below. Um, hopefully y'all are having a good week and we are getting through all this Corona mess. Um, I've never seen anything like it. I hadn't either. It's, it's something else, but we'll, we'll skip all that talk cause y'all heard enough of it and we'll jump right into our questions and answers. One thing, if you hadn't been watching our live Thursday feed, uh, this past week we did the bow maintenance one. Every week we're trying to come up with new ideas on what we can do without having to move around too much because we we wear microphones and if we that first week we moved around and there was a lot of crazy noises going on but yeah um, pretty fun thing we do on Thursday nights at six thirty so we'll keep doing those and uh, it's neat because we can interact with y'all in real time even if it's not about you know what we're particularly talking about you know you can ask questions and we can do it in real time so that's pretty cool but, yeah it is. Also, don't forget to keep sending in questions for the podcast. Yep. Um, you can email us. You can text them, 843-560-9898. Or you can send them to me at tj at archeryshack.com. Send them to T-Bob. Uh, and then you can comment. Most people just comment on the YouTube video. That's fine. Yep. So that will be good. Oh, speaking of live stuff, on this week's live, we're going to announce another giveaway, so stay tuned for that. And if you can't watch it live, that's fine. It'll post afterwards, so you can watch it after it after it posts. But yep. we'll jump into our questions. All right. First one comes in from DLR. <coughs> you ready for some go down memory lane, I reckon? Oh, Lord. Can you guys do a little history lesson on, history lesson on how y'all two ended up in business? What was Bucks and Bass? And did y'all have other jobs before archery became your full-time operation? We should do like a complete <laughs> podcast on this, but we'll keep it short and sweet yeah. just to answer the question. Um, we go way back, way back yeah. to elementary school. We, yeah, so me and TJ went to school together, and then when I was, 
I guess, uh, really, I was honestly 10 years old. <clears throat> um, archery just kind of bit me. I mean, but from the time I was 10 to 12, I was learning a lot. And uh, I guess my dad, by the time I was 12, was like, this dude kind of knows what he's doing and he's a kid or whatever. So he builds me a little shop at, at my parents' house. And, uh, I mean, it was crazy. I had a lot of customers back then. And uh, then he he ended up the next year building on. So I had a like a 15 by 32 shop. And it had, even had an upstairs, too. And that's uh, kind of how I got started. And then... Uh, I mean, you got me into it I probably... Mid-late 90s. Mid-late 90s. And then a store in town opened up. Well, they broke ground. They put the sign up first, and everybody was in the, at the local clubs and stuff was like, there's some archery store opening. So once they started building the building, I stopped in and talked to them. <clears throat> and uh, anyway, it was, so they named it Bucks and Bass. Hang on, our microphones are acting up here. Okay, so they named it. I'm just going to not worry about that. They <laughs> named it Bucks and Bass. And uh, so they hired – I was actually – the uh first employee they hired me about three weeks before the store opened and uh i was still just a teenager or whatever so you know i was kind of stocking stuff and doing this and that well once it opened it didn't take but a couple weeks and uh i was and i still am i'm i was always the i'm not i don't like tooting my own horn you know what i mean i even feel like i'm kind of tooting my horn talking about this but a couple weeks in um people were bringing bows in and I was just kind of staying in the background. They knew I knew some about bows, but again, I'm just a teenager. Well, a lot of, they, they hadn't really, they, the people that opened it had bow hunted, but not really worked on bows, you know? So they kind of didn't know how to fix some stuff and just random stuff like that. I'd already been making strings since I was like, I guess I started when I was 12 and nobody locally knew how to do it. It wasn't, you know, no internet type stuff. So I just, would take old bowstrings and take them apart literally I, I, hours and hours and hours and finally i figured out how um like a zebra string was put together back then and i was like i can do this so we my dad built me i've still got it it's up in the attic of the shop here but my dad built me my first string jig and uh that's how i got started building strings taking them apart figuring out how they were made a couple local guys that would order me material they were like we don't really know how they're made but we can get you the material and uh i gotta fix this mic real quick okay our stuff's being touchy today um so anyway that's how that started so um and then <clears throat> i need to do a we need to do a some kind of video on this whole shebang but, <laughs> yeah um so i had this shop at my dad's house my parents house Went to work at Bucks and Bass. Bucks and Bass was a big store for this town. You know, it had an indoor range. We had a digital indoor range as well. Guns, fishing, archery. Um, Clothing, you know, pretty much a a small, small Cabela's or Bass Pro yeah. Shop. And I remember when they called, I had already, they'd already hired me, but three weeks, they said, we'll call you when we get enough stuff and get ready for you, whatever. So three weeks before we opened, they called me, come on up here, help us get everything set up. And I walked in, and I mean, they had, God, like they had, it was started with High Country PSC and Matthews, and there was probably no less than uh, probably a little over 100 bows on the wall. And I was like, oh, man, this is, gonna, you know, because I'm, I'm going from working on neighbor's bows, and I had acquired a few, a few used bows and resold them and all that, but nothing major. And then, like I say, so anyway, we get a couple weeks in. They don't know how to fix some stuff. I end up kind of sneaking not being uh assertive but fixing it and then it, it don't take but a couple months and they're like you obviously know this way more than we do you're the man so i'm i'm 15 16 years old at this point and they say run the archery department you know and this is a this is like a three quarters of a million dollar deal at this point uh so and at the time i guess i didn't i just i knew what i was doing I didn't think twice about it. I never really, we never never really got into the partying scene. You know what I mean? I feel like I went from about 10, 11 years old to straight work, work, but, uh, adulthood, I guess you could yeah, say. Which I, I, I'm fine with that. But, uh, yeah, me too. Anyway. 
so Bucks and Bass was open about seven and a half years, and then the owners got a divorce, and just the economy was bad, and it closed down, and I was just burnt out, you know, from archery then, and because uh, I came in probably the last two years that the store was open, yeah, and I remember I I'd actually took a job with a school district <clears throat> in maintenance. And I was still working there on sat on the weekends and stuff, but you know I kind of seen the writing on the wall that yeah. okay it this is getting bad. So yeah, so I um bucks and ass clothes. I went and got a surgical tech degree, worked in the hospital, and for a few years, and then um for really about three or four years there, didn't do a whole lot of archery. I still had some people. It, bucks and ass was closed. I'd still I still had the. Uh, open building at my parents house so people would call me i'd go over there and fix stuff occasionally but not much you know what i mean i was just kind of burnt out we didn't really shoot uh, i worked in the hospital and then they um some colleges came through and decided to hire me uh, to teach surgical technology and that was cool and then they um i guess they really liked me because they made me the program director and all this stuff so i did that for a few years and then that leads us up to this shop i was pretty there was a lot of people calling me at that point, like, there's nobody around working on stuff, you know, you know your stuff, whatever, so I'm like, well, so at that point, I was I was program director for surgical technology over in Greenville full-time, but then in the evenings, I'd come out here and work on bows and make strings, and we had a little bit of inventory, but I didn't want to get, I didn't want to jump in too deep, I just wanted to kind of test the, the market, so we, we, when I bought this property this shop was here but it was just a metal shell 40 or uh 40 by 40 metal shell no nothing you know so we we put up the walls and insulated it and ran ac and heat and lights and the whole nine yards so it's the whole story of the blood sweat and tears but anyway so that that was uh 2013 and then i knew at that point um I need to get back in archery full time. You know, everybody, this is just what's meant to be or whatever. So 2015, I told uh, the college I work for, I said, I want to go part time. I will, I'll stay until you can find somebody to replace me. And then I'm going to go part time. And then I'm, I may or may not stay here. And uh, I ended up staying about another year and a half. And then I left from doing that. And I do miss doing that. But uh, anyway, and then TJ you've been here is it going on two years i think we're past the two years okay. i think it's going on three but you know i've always been in and out on weekends or whenever i could yeah tj is still working full-time school district um coming in on the weekends and helping and then we kind of started chatting about what can we do to get tj here full-time and then it worked out to get him here full-time a couple of years ago and pretty much here we are yep so uh and then we really hit back got back to shoot in 2013 2014 time frame <clears throat> and then uh you know in my head i kind of knew what i wanted to do out here i wanted to have we got woods and all i wanted to make sure we could have 3d shoots i wanted to make sure i could shoot out to 100 yards and have that set up with bag targets um you know the whole nine yards and then strings have always been a big part of it so yeah we've never really quit making strings um i initially out here had my cousin helping me he got laid off from his job, <clears throat> and uh, then Robert helped me, and then now TJ, and then we got Jackie and John and Mikey, and we got a bunch of people helping us now. But um, so it's pretty cool. I think part of the cool thing about this shop is, and again, I don't like toot my own horn, but I know how to play the internet. You know what I mean? Like we sell a lot of strings on the internet, and we also do a good business locally, but when it's the slow time, you know, I can push strings on the internet harder and it keeps everybody busy. So it's not like, oh, yeah. it's not like it's me and TJ. And then for three months out of the year, we freak out and we're either way behind or we have to bring in extra help, but it's only for two or three months. So we keep everybody out here rolling. So that really, that really helps out a lot doing those online, but in strings, we need to do another podcast just on strings, but it's come so far, you know, my first jig to now we've got all this pneumatic mechanical stuff that yeah. automatically twists and stretches and measures and i mean just all kinds of stuff but 
I mean, we hadn't reached a level yet of actually having machines that lay lay the strings yeah. out and everything for us. So. Yeah. <laughs> I've I've played with that idea, but I just don't think the to keep the quality we want to keep. I want to keep it about kind of where we're at. You know, yeah. I mean, we, you get over you get over seven or eight people involved, and it starts to me it starts kind of you can't keep an eye on everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but anyway, that's sort of our story in a nutshell. We'll, we'll probably maybe one day do a whole podcast and just. Take a trip down memory lane. That's but, right. Um, but it's been fun. It, I mean, oh man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Though. Lots of lots of changes, bow wise, in those twenty couple years, yep. and um, just all sorts of stuff. But I need to find. I've, I've been thinking for years. I need to make a video, but I don't even know. I, I initially started in the back of my dad's shop. He had a big workbench, and he was like, "All right, this is yours." And that's when, like all, all like the neighbors and just word of mouth would come out there and get their bows fixed. And we welded up a bow press, old school. I need to find pictures of that if they exist. And then I know I've got pictures of when he built the shop and then added on to it and all that stuff. But uh, anyway, cool stuff. Yep. All right. This one, I'm going to go ahead and the guy asked this question, but we'll talk for a minute, but let's save it for a live feed that we're planning on doing about the same subject. But right. Any advice on a site set up for tack? My HHA is good to 80 yards, assuming I'm going to need to run a light setup, air setup. Going to try to go to the Tennessee tack, and this is from Grunman69. Yeah, well, maybe we'll do a live. We've been talking about doing a live feed on like our tax setup because people tax setup to me is almost like a field setup, uh, but you got to walk a lot more. So like you want a skinny arrow because you're going to be shooting you know, hundred plus yards, but yeah. you also don't want a whole lot of crap on your bow because you're going to be walking your butt off. Yeah, and we even had straps and stuff, you know, slings on our bows last year. Um, yeah, maybe we'll just devote a whole live feed maybe even meeting like may right before we go yeah to that and show everybody i mean that hha he's got i mean if he runs a little bit lighter setup he should be able to get the yardage out of it oh, easy yeah. so and another trick is you know i had a guy i have several guys they'll need to shoot out to whatever yardage and they'll run out of room like on an hha and i'll say all right here's here's what you can do aim with the top of your bubble level you know what i mean like go run down your pen and see where that ends up at. Because I know Robert couldn't make it out for a field shoot to whatever it was. Yep. And it ended up the top of his level was perfect at whatever yardage we were trying to hit. So we'll talk about that more. Just stay tuned. Yep, stay tuned. Um, short versus long ATA, what do you prefer? And this comes in from the 724. Short and long ATA is like the way I describe it to people is like if I take this pencil sitting here, and I try to torque it back and forth is real easy to do. But if I take an arrow that's a lot longer than that and try to torque it back and forth, it takes a lot more effort to move it, and it's not going to move around as quickly. That's the difference in a short and long riser. You know what I mean? So the good thing is shorter ATA bows now have long, long, long risers, way longer. I mean, I remember like the SQ2, I think, had a 16-inch riser on a yeah. 31-inch bow. The limbs were like half of it because they were so big. And that joker was all over the place. Yeah. But then you take something like a VXR28 or a Trix or whatever, and the riser is way long, and those little limbs come back, and it's not as bad. But still, if you compare that to, say, a 33 or 35-inch bow, there's a noticeable difference. Even when we shot video, I think it was on a Trix, me and you both went out there, and at, like, 60 yards, there was a noticeable, yeah. like, damn it, I'm having, to fi- I'm having to really concentrate where we normally wouldn't have to because yeah. this thing's wanting to move a lot so um i'm I, the longer the better but you know if you're, it's according to what you're doing if you're hunting i don't want to go over 35 and then if you're tournament shooting according to what you're doing like to me 37 is a good 3d number 37 is a good all-around number but i've got the 39 inch bow mainly because prime don't make a 37 right now and it is a bit much sometimes it's great for like indoor but i sometimes when i'm lugging it around i'm like damn it should have just had a 35 but Maybe they'll come out with a 37. But it's just preference. Yep. All right. Next one comes in from the 612. Main drawbacks of a whisker biscuit. The biscuits actually are pretty dang good. Mm-hmm. 
uh, still sell a lot of them, still work on a lot of them. I'd say the main drawback would be a longer distance or a, a novice shooter because with it, you know, sort of grabbing your arrow, a little flinch is really going to be magnified versus a drop away that's not touching it, you know, and it's still both ways going to affect your shot, but with it around the arrow and it's not like it's a super tight fit but no um and i you know you can look up what is the pig man we had a video used to come on in here he shoots shooting at 100 yards and and grouping them with a biscuit i don't don't have any trouble with the biscuit as far as you know i don't try to talk nobody into it or out of it It's, it's a great rest for hunting so maybe and this is what when they first come out the biggest drawback was is now they've they've redesigned them since when they first come out, the bristles yeah. were so stiff yeah. that it would pull your fletching off or it would wrinkle them. And of course you do lose like what? Two feet per second at the most. It's according to like used to with a four inch vein, you could lose seven or eight feet per second. Now with a blazer, it's only a couple feet per second. And if not many people shoot a feather, but with a feather, it's not much at all. But mm-hmm. um, I wish people would still shoot feathers because out of a biscuit, you know, they lay back. It don't, which i mean it don't mess with a blazer either i remember when they when the biscuit came out four inch veins were the thing and it would wrinkle them all up you know it'd be all wavy looking or it peeled the front of it up and we'd have to dot the front of them yeah so that's that's just the biggest drawback that i've seen but you know like i said that's been what 10 15 years ago you know so the new the original biscuit was solid no hole no way to put your air in except from the back stiff then they came out with one with the notch in it, so you slide your arrow in. Then they started coming out with them where the stiffest bristles are just on the bottom. Yep. Um, and now they got the – we haven't even – have we got any in yet, the new fancy one? Uh-uh, we haven't got any new ones in yet. I guess they're behind making them because we ordered them in, like, November. But they got the new biscuit that's got, like, three separate bristles, and you adjust it. And I, yep. don't, I don't know much about it other than we've seen it a couple times. But <laughs> Yeah, we'll that's see. about it. We'll see. All right. Next one comes in from the 643, it looks like. What companies are closed for Corona? Mm, a lot, to be honest. Um, oh, let me think. <clears throat> well, Prime reached out to me this week, I guess it was, first of this week, and said Michigan was ordered, ordered to shelter in place and essential businesses or whatever, and they're going to be closed until April 15th. So... I think Bayer was Bayer Bayer. emailed yesterday, the day before. They're gone till mid April. Matthews, literally right before we fired up, I seen where Matthews posted there till April 24th. So several. Mm -hmm. Um, I think BCY is out. Didn't I see Elite Elite was closed down too? They're in New York, so probably. Yeah. I didn't, but a lot of people, so. The only thing that's going to suck is people, and we got one guy right now, and I feel bad, but he's got a bow ordered from Prime, and they said, they said, as soon as we get back, it'll be one of the first out, but we can't go back till they say we, we can. Yeah. So I don't think, you know, it ain't nobody's fault. It's no. just, it sucks, you know. And I seen where some people had posted that they had some Matthews bows ordered from different places, and they were telling them now there's going to be a little bit of a delay, but. And then I'm sure there's plenty more than that. That's just what I have know of and have, have read about. But Yeah. Uh, corona. Mm. All right. Next one is from the 910. Any advantage of aluminum over carbon? That's a pretty good one. I'd still like to set up an old school aluminum hunting arrow bow with like some 2314s and the 125 grain tip. But... Um, so aluminum, <clears throat> typically, especially the, the XX78 models, uh, the 78 series aluminum or whatever, they are super straight. I'm talking about you can spin them on a spine tester or whatever, and the needle won't move, you know. But even carbons came a long way. You know, they're three, four thousandths and straighter now when you actually check them, not just what's on the box. Uh, but, but aluminums don't, like, crack like carbons. They're, they're got more tensile strength. Uh, the only thing about aluminum is, and this takes several years, like many, many moon, but they do say that aluminum crystallizes and it can change the spine of it over the course of, you know, several years, like a long time. But uh, as far as advantage of aluminum over carbon, they are, for the most part, straighter and you ain't got to worry about them like cracking and blowing up and going in your arm. But 
there's not many aluminum arrows out there anymore. I mean, you got like the FMJ that's both, but as far as like people shooting straight up aluminum, other than indoors, not mm -hmm. really. Not really. I mean, I can't even remember. Well, I had a guy, he brought in an older bow today. Yeah, that's when we see it. People bring in old, old bows out of the closet. Yeah. And it'll have aluminum, but as far as us selling aluminum nah. i couldn't tell you the last time i seen an aluminum shaft for sale anywhere in a store or anything but yeah back in the day bucks and bass um we had i don't know 20 or 30 dozen aluminums this would have been 2001 when we opened and not many people wanted them so we ended up i, I kept like 22 13s Still, a bunch of rednecks was wanting to shoot 2117s. I kept a few sizes in stock, but it was obvious carbon was the way to go. And then, you know, a few years later, no aluminum. So I remember we taking the aluminum shafts and some of them and cutting them down for crossbow bolts because everybody still shot aluminum out of crossbows. Yeah, I forgot about that. Now, I don't even know if you can get aluminum crossbow bolts. I think you can get some cheap ones. Yeah. And crossbows were such a different thing then. Uh, yeah, a whole lot different than what they are now. But, yeah, aluminum. Like I say, I'd love to set up an old school hunting setup, you know, even go like with a Thunderhead or a Muzzy or something like that, Twenty big air, a big 2314, 125 on about a 72, 74-pound bow just for old time's sake and go whack a deer. But I don't know. We just don't hear much about it anymore. Nope. All right. The next one comes in from the seven seven zero. How Georgia. can how can I increase speed on my older Matthews? Um, you know, there's the easy stuff like you know you shoot a lighter arrow, it speeds your bow up, but you can only go as light as about five grains per pound. You increase your weight, it speeds it up. I'm just going over the basics first. Um, you increase your draw weight, you increase your draw length, but of course you don't want to do that if it fits you. Um, you know, then there's little stuff like you could shoot feathers and you'll get two or three or four feet per second extra. If you're shooting a biscuit, you could go to a drop away and get two, three, four feet per second. Um, even like he said, older Matthews, if it's got a cable, yeah. if it's got a cable rod, you could switch to a Teflon slide and get two or three feet per second versus the factory. Um, just try, you know, according to what, if you got string silencers on the string, and you can take them off without it being loud. That'll give you some feet per second. Mm -hmm. um, even, you know, peep sight. If you're really getting down to the nitty-gritty, I think it's Octane makes a carbon peep sight. You know, you could decrease the weight of your peep sight and gain a few feet per second. And that's just some of the random stuff. I mean, there's... If your strings and cables are old, you know, put a new set on there, and you'll probably gain a few feet per second. Just I'm just throwing out random stuff that's coming to mind, but... Uh, the biggest thing would be lighter arrow, more draw weight, but you don't want to make it loud either. So yep. just according to, we'd have to know more about the setup. All right. Next one is from the 617. Disadvantages of buying a used bow. We see a lot of bow swapping these days because of Facebook and Archery Talk and eBay and Amazon and all this stuff. But, um... The bad thing is you don't get the warranty that comes with the bow. So it's sort of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Gamble. Mm -hmm. But it's it's going to be in your favor. You know what I mean? Nine times out of ten or, or 99 out of 100 times, you're not going to have any trouble with a bow. You know what I mean? But if you do, let's say a limb cracks, just random number, you're going to be in, you know, 150, 200 bucks to get that fixed. And that's pretty much the main thing that I'd be worried about. Um, so, you know, I, the thing that scares me about all this Facebook swapping is you can't physically look at the bow. And once you got it, it'd be a sort of a mess to try to return it and get your money back and all that. But if you can physically look at the bow, you know, and look at the limbs and look at whatever. We have people coming here a lot. And, I mean, we don't charge them anything, but they'll be like, hey, I want to buy this bow can i meet a guy there and y'all just give it a look look over we'll give you a few bucks i'm like don't worry about it because we'll end up you know we'll set it up for him or sell him something but the main thing is the limbs 
I'll put it on the draw board. Of course, if you ain't got that, definitely want to pull it back, make sure there ain't no craziness going on. Yep. And then I'll eyeball the cams and make sure like it hadn't been dry fired and the cams are warped or something. And uh, But anyway, that's pretty much it. You don't get the warranty. And uh, I guess the sort of the workaround, according to what company it's from, you know, if you're buying it from the original owner, get their name, and then at least you got their name to where if you need to get parts, you might could use their name. I don't know, but yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, like you say, not getting that warranty is probably the biggest thing. But and I mean, it's a big deal. But I mean, well, you see, so many people. If you on Facebook, you see it. People are swapping and trading every day, so it's not yeah. that big a deal. Yeah. All right. A uh, next one comes in from the eight six four. Do y'all prefer a cable slide or a roller? I'm a hardcore. I love a cable rod and slide, but they're almost extinct. Yep. So roller it is. Um, I remember when the rollers first came out, they had some squeaking issues and, I remember when they, some of them didn't, wasn't made just right, and sometimes the cable would want to jump out of the roller. Just that kind of left, and that was a long time ago. But um, I feel like that slide. Well, I don't feel like I know when that slide slides back. It actually gives you more effective let off because that, those cables are not being bound up even more by that roller not moving with that sliding back. Now there are problems with the cable rod and slide. You know, it can get stuff on it and squeak and do all this stuff, but that's pretty rare. And honestly, there's hardly any trouble with the rollers anymore. The last roller trouble I can remember recently was Obsession sent out a, a buku of bows. We got seven of them. <laughs> yeah, we and did. the rollers would not roll. You could take your finger and roll them, but on the shot, you could put a mark on them, and they st- they would not roll. And they fixed it. But uh, So that was a mess. But And I've had a couple Hoyts come in. I think it was an, around the Nitrum time, and they had a roller like a flex roller it would flex out when you drew and though it was a really like a fiberglass material that would flex and they'd come in cracked and a couple of people had to go get replacement parts and i fixed them but i just think the slide is easier you know even for us restringing them we have to like pull them through the roller sometimes it's sort of a pain in the butt that slide you just put your cable slide on there and roll with it but it's up for debate but it mostly everybody's went to a roller so yeah i some of your middle price and cheaper bows still have the rod and slide, but that's about it. I was going to say, who on the high end side, or I'm not going to say high end, but middle to mid range to high end bows have a cable slide? So, you know, some of like the Bears do. Um, and then they got the little arm. I'm just looking at them now. And then I know some of the Hoyt, the cheaper Hoyts, have still got the rod. I can't remember. Are they running a cable slide on their tournament bow still, or did they finally switch over to the roller? Who's that? Hoyt. Roller. And then like the, they still offer the Matthews Conquest 4. It's got the, the rod. I think some of the cheaper PSCs have the rod. That's about it. But that's all I got. That's it for questions. Y'all send them in. We'll answer them. It'll be cool. We might have a question. Uh-oh. I'm going to put it on here. It just got texted in. It wasn't even meant for the podcast, but somebody said, can you recommend a quality and affordable arrow quiver for a compound bow? Yes, I can. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple real quick. Um, The quickie quiver is like old school, good. It's plastic, but you can beat it around, and they're only, you know, 30 bucks or whatever they are. Um, My favorite quiver, I think both of our favorite quivers, because we both shot them last year, is that Trophy Ridge hex light quiver. And Man. it's got, maybe we'll make it a featured product on one of these, but it's got a button you push and it'll shine a light out the front of it. So if you're toting your bow in, you got a little green light or you can hit another button and it'll put a dim green light on the arrows. So if it's getting dark, you can see how to get them out. And I think it runs around 70 bucks. Yeah. So it's a, getting a little bit pricier, but still not crazy priced. It's a five air quiver and... You know, I was kind of thinking, because it ain't got but three green LEDs in the top of it that you can actually walk in by. So, I'm like, man, this ain't going to be bright enough to see. So, I'm like, I'm not even going to take my flashlight with me. that. I didn't even take my flashlight, turned it on, and that joker was bright enough that I could see to walk to my stand without 
any problems. And I was kind of like, okay, it made a believer out of me. So but that, I love that hex light. Now, you get into the high end, like tight spots, and that's you're looking at like $150 plus. Some of the Matthews quivers, tight spot. Tree limb. Tree limb's got some high end stuff. And then tree end's got some cheaper stuff too. Yeah. But they're super nice. You're just getting into a lot of money for something that I take off the bow when I get up there, you know. The the one I want to look at again or get my hands back on is that new uh, Talon Quiver from Conquest. That thing, I got to get some in here. It's got like a, the, the connect system is different from anything I've ever seen. It's got like, that's why they call it the Talon because it's like a claw and it's tight spring loaded you know and it grabs on there i think it runs about 70 bucks ish but at the show they had it and they's like grab this we got it on this bow grab it by the quiver and just sling it and try to make it fall off and i was like do what i'm over slinging it and the guy grabs it from me and he really slings it he's like it ain't going nowhere and i was like hmm, i'm a customer but uh <laughs> anyway somebody just texted that in i thought it'd be funny to add on there yep but quivers 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 Let's talk about Corona and canceled shoots. ASA announced they have now canceled the Texas Pro-Am, so there's another one gone. Uh, Reading got canceled. I think several NFAA things that I'm not up to date with got canceled. Um, I think wait, This yeah. stuff needs to go on. This has been a mess. Um, I think really for that we're – Right now, it's going to be weird because people are going to listen to this a year down the road and be like, what are they talking about? But we're in the middle of this coronavirus thing. It's middle of, or in toward the end of March. I still think we got a good month of craziness. Stuff shutting down. We're in South Carolina. They hadn't, other than we can't go eat at a restaurant currently, there's nothing crazy happening. You know, all, all the businesses are still open and that sort of thing. But, um, I don't know. I, I wrote down a note to talk about archery stuff you could do while being quarantined. We have seen an uptake of interest in archery here lately, I guess, because people are at home and shooting and that sort of thing. But, you know, go in your backyard with your kids or whatever and fire off some arrows. And uh, there's a, always people that want to get into uh, traditional archery. You know, you can get one of those Samic Sages. Well, I did a video on it. If you look, type in on our channel, Samic Sage, there's a little video. But, mm hmm they're only like 120 130 bucks for a package go out there and just fling some arrows you can even take the wife out there and just be, you know it's a recurve you ain't got to do anything fancy just to play and stuff but um it's a good time to kind of get your bow ready for hunting season uh you know if it needs to be waxed or restrung or arrows fletched or whatever and you're just kind of sitting around at home i know a lot of people have been laid off or maybe not laid off but you can't work until they give you the clear so yep just a good time to shoot turkey season's on top of us um april the first so we're right on top of that yep shoot old turkey bird um i seen where our in south carolina our state parks are going to be closed but they're going to supposedly leave the boat ramps open you know so everybody can go fish i thought that was a pretty good idea yeah i'd seen that too uh my little brother, they said like two weeks ago that I can't remember where it was, but said something about they were shutting down the boat ramps. And I'm like, mm -hmm. how in the world are you going to shut down the boat ramps? Yeah, That's the most least crowded place there is. I seen stuff on Facebook and it was just somebody trying to start crap. I figured that. <clears throat> but uh, the old fake news. Hopefully y'all are doing, I know different states, some states are, states are really bunkered down. And at this point in time, we're not really that much bunkered down. Um like I say, just trying to not get in big groups of people. We were going, we canceled a shoot because we sh we could have had it, but, uh, you know, it's, the governor of South Carolina was like, try not to get in groups of three or more and all that. And I didn't want like 50 people to show up and everybody be coming down the road. Oh, God, let's call the cops. They're having a gathering. Yeah. But uh, I'll be glad when it gets back to normal. Me too. It's, it's uh, I mean, like, it don't bother me personally because um, I'm not out and about all that much but it's uh with all these archery companies not shipping stuff temporarily and it's just you know a lot of people out of work that's probably not going to be a good thing in the long run so no. I think the better the quicker it can all get going again the better and i honestly i've been waiting on them to announce south carolina's doing some sort of a something but not 
yet so far. I think New York's bad as far as cases, and I'm sure all the heavily populated areas. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Corona. Who would have saw this coming? I mean, it was like a month ago, we didn't even hear about it, and then... All of a sudden, everybody... Three, going on three weekends ago, it was like Thursday, Friday was kind of some talk about it, and then by Monday, Tuesday, it was like everybody's going wild, you know. Wasn't no bread. Yeah, toilet papers. Yeah, toilet paper. Kind of figure out. I need to order. We've been having to use some of our archery magazines. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I'm sure to be back to normal. I was going to say, i just been going out back and using a hose pipe, but you know, I mean... <laughs> Sorry for the neighbors back there, but mm. Mm -hmm. um, no, nah, we ain't been doing that. We got plenty of TP. Maybe we should give t a free roll away with every purchase. <laughs> That'd be funny. That'd be a funny video. No, nah, I'm just, I know everybody's out there. I know they're tired of hearing about it because pretty much, like, I don't even get on Facebook anymore, hardly. Yeah. I don't, I, you know, I'm all the time on Facebook just looking, trying to see what's going on and it's like every post is Corona this, yeah. Corona that. And I'm like, good grief. I said, I'm tired of it. So yeah. I just got off of it. But I'll look at the <clears> news <throat> like once or twice a day. I just want to make sure there's no South Carolina update going on. And uh, other than that, I, I'm tired of hearing about it too. But, it just seems like it's mostly the the old folk are at risk. And I don't know anybody personally that's had it, but I, I've got friends of friends and they all just said, and they're all middle-aged people said that they were just tired and it was sort of like a flu and it passed away and they didn't pass away but it passed from them in a couple of days type thing but it sounds like the older folks are the ones to worry about especially if they already got problems but i think that's the flu in general you know what i mean I, the flu I, kills a bunch of people every year and it's generally you know people that have weakened immune systems and all this stuff but well, you know, the thing about it is it's starting to warm up like to, it's what 84 degrees today mm -hmm. Well, you know, you got, you know, turkey season coming. So be on the lookout for ticks. Ticks is, I got a feeling ticks are going to be bad this year. Yeah. So, you know, you got your coronavirus going on now and tick season. You hear about the Lyme disease. I know two or three people personally that's got Lyme, had Lyme disease, whatever. And it's still one guy in particular. He got it. They didn't know what was going on with him. It took like a month of tests to figure out this joker's got Lyme disease. And he, I forget what all he had to do, but he's, this has been six, seven, eight years ago. He's still having trouble from mm -hmm. that. And I guess it got, they let it get so bad because they couldn't figure out what was going on with him. But and I know another fellow that had it uh, and it wasn't that bad. And matter of fact, Freddie Taylor got bit by a tick and there's some big long name that I can't remember or pronounce, but whatever it transferred to him, and this is no joke, he can no longer eat red meat. If he eats red meat, he said he swells up. And this joke, I mean, he's always been good health. He ain't fat. He ain't skinny. You know, just a good old dude. And uh, so if he eats red meat, like, he can't breathe and all this crazy stuff. Whatever happened to his immune system after the tick bit him. He got at Rocky Mountain spotted fever. That's what he yeah. got. And that's what caused this. And uh, I don't know much about all that, but it's something else. So just be careful out there in the turkey woods and if you are somewhere where you can still get out i mean even the people even if you're shooting in your backyard just oh, yeah you know if it's starting getting especially down here in the south it's i got a feeling we got maybe another week or two of this up and down and then i think we're just going to kind of level out and yeah. start our early summer yeah it's been pattern. warming up quick here but anyway we'll quit rambling on thank y'all for listening um we'll be live thursday night to talk about another giveaway Got videos coming out on the Sundays with bow tunings and shootings and all that stuff. So check into that. If you want some of these stabilizers or anything we talked about, look in the description. I'll link it all. And uh, y'all be safe. Stay germ free. <laughs> and uh, keep your toilet paper stocked. That's right. See y'all later. See y'all. <laughs>